Hello, everyone. My name is Patricia Morenci, and this is Mental Health Mondays. This is our ongoing Q&A series in which we at CAPS are answering your questions submitted anonymously about mental health topics. If you're interested in participating, feel free to click the link to our survey below. You can also get the link to our survey by following us on Instagram at our account at U of A Caps. On this episode, we're gonna be talking about myths and facts on therapy. We're gonna take the time and dedicate to talking and challenging those stereotypes, myths, and lies about therapy. So we're gonna take those myths and bust it. Is that, is that how, yeah, that's the definition of word, right? Wait, wait. Oh no, it's not, it's, oh, okay. Well, you live and learn. Let's get started. Myth number one, therapists cannot be trusted to keep your secrets or maintain your privacy. This is also shown in media and movies and TVs where the therapists are often lying or deceiving or self-serving. Well, that obviously is not true. And it's unfortunate that a lot of people feel this way. The truth is we as therapists and mental health professionals are bound, ethically bound to maintain confidentiality and privacy. And whereas we exist in many different fields, psychology, social work, professional counselors, we all are bound to make sure that our clients information is safe and secure and confidential. Wow, this sounds like a really good topic. I think this is something that we could dedicate a whole video to talking about. Well, good luck for you. We've already done that. So if you're interested in learning more about privacy and confidentiality and the few exceptions to that rules, feel free to click the link to view our episode number four. All right, next myth. Therapists are weird and crazy and awkward people. You know, in terms of watching things on media, you know, I can understand why a lot of people feel that way. You know, actually, comment on below on the video and give us an example of a weird therapist that you've seen in movies, TV, and television. There's so many to count. I'm thinking of a bunch of them right now. And the truth is, no, we're not the weird out of oddball eccentric people that you see on TV or actually regular folk and we're actually highly educated people. I think that's another myth that people think that therapists aren't educated and that it's something that just anyone can do. We're trained specifically in our respective programs, you know, on the most recent and up-to-date theories regarding mental health. So what you see on TV isn't necessarily true and hopefully you get matched with a therapist that might have a quirky personality, but otherwise should be well equipped to handle your issues. Next myth, going to therapy will fix all your problems or in other words, the therapist will have all the answers and solve all your problems in life. And this is a very complex and complicated topic. So in the shorthand, the answer is no, a therapist cannot solve or have the magical fix to all your problems. But instead, what we will do is we will walk you through in being able to process and learn techniques to effectively solve your problems on your own, or adjust to them or cope with them. And this is just going by, you know, in terms of actuality and reality, there are so many issues and things that are going on in our life and a lot of these things are outside of our control. So we, just like anyone else in the world, won't be able to have a magical power to evaporate all the things, the you know negative things that are happening in someone's life, especially things that are outside your control. But that's not to say that therapy can't be an effective use of time. Therapy is really client-centered and so it really depends on what the client brings in the room. And the therapist there as a guide and a facilitator help the person walk through the issues they're having and to come up with a plan that works best for them. So what, what what may work for one person may not necessarily work for another person, but in that way it's personalized and hopefully the person can be able to use this environment to, you know, work out something that's best for them. Next myth, 
Your therapist will be your 24 seven on call crisis person. Yes, this is another misinformed perception about therapy. Well, yes, therapists, you know, like myself, are very, very interested and concerned about your well being. But the reality is, just like any other job, you know, there are times when we're in office and there are times that we're outside of office. So we may not be, depending on the type of organization or therapist you work with, we may not be available 24 7 a day. That is not to say that you cannot get assistance when you need that outside the normal office hours or outside your plan session time. So specifically at CAPS, we have normal business hours, eight to five. And if you're working with somebody there, you're gonna have your scheduled time to meet. But if you run into some any issues and you're really distressed and you need someone to talk to, and this is also true for people who aren't already clients of CAPS, as long as you're a student at the U of A, you have access to our 24 seven emergency hotline. So if your therapist, your particular therapist is not available, you still can use that number to call and there will be someone to help you 24 seven a day. It just may not be your therapist, but that doesn't mean that you will be able to get the support that you need. And that phone number is listed right here. Oh, and it is also on the back of your student ID card under mental health crisis. Next myth. Your therapist will become romantically or sexually involved with you. This is a major stereotype that needs some clarification. The answer is no. Your therapist, if your therapist is an ethically bound therapist that's following all the rules and regulations, will not be romantically or sexually involved with you. That is against our ethical code. And that really misses the whole point of counseling. You go into therapy and counseling to help to have someone to help you through your problems. And so it would really be an abuse of power for a therapist to change that role into something else. And so there are different words and verbiage across mental health disciplines, but it can be agreed upon that these types of relationships we call dual relationships, meaning that you have more than one type of relationship, therapist and something else, in this case, therapist or romantic partner, does not happen and should not happen. That's reportable and a person can get in serious trouble, losing their license, having fines, imprisonment. There's many different things that can happen. And so another related question that people ask in terms of this is, what happens when the therapy is over? Is there a specified time in which something may or may not happen? That is a very good question that depends on the health discipline. But once again, that is something that is highly discouraged and specifically within the social workers ethical ethical code that I follow in, the answer is never. So once the person becomes a client of mine, that is the only relationship I can hold with them. And even though it is over, we cannot establish any type of romantic friendship or sexual relationship out of that, right? The person comes in for a service, that's the service we provide for them. And then afterwards, you know, we go in our separate ways. Hopefully that person will be able to better navigate the world, but I would still be kind of like a teacher or someone in the past that you've seen. I would still maintain that role even though I'm not actively seen. Next myth, going to therapy means that you're crazy. I actually should have started the video with this one. I think this is a very, very common stereotype and misperception. Just because you're seeking out therapy doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you and that you're crazy. Seeking out therapy actually can be seen as a strength. You know that you're going through something, it's difficult, it's painful, and you need some tools to help you out or you need a space to process that. There's nothing wrong and it's completely normal to ask for help when you need it. And I know that in many different cultures, across different cultures, I feel like there is this misperception as well. And across different cultures is going to look a little bit differently. Sometimes people feel like they can't because it's frowned upon their culture to ask for help. It's frowned upon their family to reach out and talk about things about the family outside the family. But truthfully, if you really feel that you're struggling with something, it may be beneficial just to have a person, a third person, an independent person who's outside of everything to give you that space to process it through. And it is something that many, many people 
have used in the past. And I think it's something that many people are speaking up about. Just look at the loads of celebrities that are now coming out with their stories about their personal struggles with mental health or substance abuse. And the fact that they were able to reach out to therapy and, and realize that it's more beneficial than it is to deal with these things alone or think that you're crazy for doing. Next myth, therapy is endless and it will cost you a fortune. All right, well, this addresses two things. Let's talk about the endless stuff, so the time. So yes, I'm gonna acknowledge the fact and you probably know that there are some people that go for therapy for years and years and years, and that is something that works for them. But that doesn't necessarily have to be the case for everyone. In fact, a lot of people can find therapy to be helpful in just a couple or several sessions. And so we at CAPS, we do offer that brief individual therapy if you're a good fit for it. And once you can be able to process and get the school, the and get the skills and tools that you would need to adjust in just a couple to several sessions. Also, in terms of the next part, therapy will cost you a fortune. Once again, I'm not gonna deny the fact that there are some therapists in certain regions of the country or the community that, you know, charge a significant amount of money for their services. But therapy does not have to be a fortune. And so we at CAPS, we are dedicated to providing services to students at a low enough cost. And we also have a reduced charges program available, available for those people that feel like you cannot meet the current cost of sessions. And the cool thing about it, also about our services, is that we offer groups and groups are free. And so if you're concerned about finances being a barrier to getting the help that you need, I would still encourage you to reach out to us because hopefully we can work out some way to help you in-house or we can refer you to someone in the community that offers a sliding fee scale. And so that's another one too. Sliding fee scale is kind of depending on your income, your finances, whatever your situation is, you and your provider can negotiate what that new fee may be. And so a lot of therapists in the community may offer that. And so that's another reason that you can come to CAPS too, to get that information if you would prefer to see someone out in the community. We have those resources for you. So these next couple of myths fall into a category or an umbrella of certain types of issues in regards to our emotions. So it ranges from there's nothing you can do about the past and therapy is all about just thinking happy thoughts and it's also going to make your painful problems worse. So let me address all of these because these are they're touching on different things, but there's also some similarities among them. So let's talk about therapy. Yes, therapy does involve at times processing and talking about painful events and emotions. But the idea is that this process is necessary in order for us to take the first steps in moving forward. It's been shown time and time again that the more that we deny what is happening or denying what we're actually feeling, pushing them down, pushing them away, distracting ourselves, doing whatever we can to avoid this, is actually prolonging our suffering. And so it is actually important for us to acknowledge those painful things as a first step in moving forward. And so therapy can hopefully give that safe space for you to feel comfortable enough to start talking about those issues, knowing that you need to talk through it and feel them in order for you to start in your journey of healing. And this kind of ties into the therapy is all about thinking happy thoughts. I'm a realist um, and, you know, I would say and I, you know, would assume that my other colleagues and therapists would agree is that it's not all just about pushing everything away and just thinking happy thoughts. That's not how emotions work. Emotions come in a variety of different levels, ups and downs. You can feel many different things. You can feel none of the things. And so it would be kind of reductive for us to just say, just think happy things, right? It's more about addressing what issue you have at hand and being able to sit in those discomfort, dis uncomfortable feelings, process them and work through them so that you can get into a better place of coping better with your mood. 
just like we can't say everything's going to be happy and joyful all the time, we can't say that everything's going to be miserable and terrible all the time. That's not how emotions work. And so it's being able to ride the wave when you're feeling down, being able to sit with it and process it so that you can feel a little bit better. Well, if you found this information to be helpful, I would like for you to do a couple of things. First of all, if you are interested in the content that was used to make this presentation, we have the links to the articles that were used. And if you found this video to be entertaining, I would love for you to like it. And I would also like for you to subscribe to our channel and make sure when you're subscribing to that channel to click that bell icon so you can be notified for every new episode of our show. All right, until next time, see ya.